In case you missed it, GTC 2022 is in full swing. This is my video where I report on the keynote from Jensen Wong, the CEO of NVIDIA. You always want to make sure you catch the keynote from Jensen. It covers really a lot of new things coming out in the AI industry, of which NVIDIA is certainly at the center of. I'm going to cover some of the key points that I thought were particularly interesting to me. You'll definitely want to check out RacerX. This was one of the premier demonstrations. Usually they create a video. Last time it was showing some marbles with full ray tracing. This is a full-on game where these race cars are... The suspension, everything is simulated. These are not games, they're simulations. And certainly the games of the future will be more simulations where you're actually simulating the drivetrain and everything of these cars that can be affected as they go through the race. This demo that you're seeing here of Racer X is ran on one new, I believe it's a 4090 style of their new series of GPUs coming out, the 40 series. And certainly one of my favorites, Flight Simulator. I have literally been playing this game since the 8-bit world. You can now get such high, amazing frame rates with the new 40 series GPUs. You can see examples of that here. Using DLSS3 to fill in the mixing, missing pixels, get those really high frame rates using that convolution neural network. And something I know all of you will be very interested in, the 4090, the 40 series is upon us. This is amazing. This is a $1,600 GPU with 24 gigabytes of RAM. This is more than enough to tackle most of the AI problems that I throw at it. I'm using an A6000 that's got 48 gigs of RAM, but man, 24 will do a lot of stuff. Looks like the 4080 has two different sizes of RAM. I'm sure there'll be a price difference there. But you can see the entire line here. Definitely something that I will be taking a look at. I've not had a chance to look at Omniverse a lot, but there's a lot going on there. They're talking about how the web world is rendered in HTML and Omniverse is allowing digital twins and even things not in the, in the real world to be rendered in USD, which is another kind of like the, the metaverse comparable version of HTML that you use to build these 3D experiences like you see here. NVIDIA also updated a lot of their SDKs. Some of the ones that they're particularly talking about were Rapids, which now has direct integration into Spark 3. This allows you to take basically Pandas data frames and process them at light speed GPU rates. Triton it was updated as well. This allows virtually any model to be served on servers that have NVIDIA GPUs available to them. CV CUDA is a computer vision library that is optimized for CUDA. Certainly lots of applications there, particularly for modifying images ahead of sending them into neural networks. Ku Quantum is very interesting. Quantum computers, you probably cannot get a hold of a quantum computer currently, but you can use high-end NVIDIA workstations to simulate one to get software ready for this coming very exciting advance in computing. They also have released a JAX. So JAX, if you're not familiar with it, this is somewhat Kira's answer to PyTorch for research. It's the... It's the more PyTorch-like variant uh, from, from Google that allows you to really construct the individual pieces without a lot of opinions from things something like Akira is getting in the way. They've created, they've worked with the JAX team and have created a CUDA highly optimized version of JAX. Nemo, which allows access to large language models without having to retrain the entire model. And on the server side, now we have the L100, which is the, the high-end hopper architecture for the, the, the back end. These will be the equivalents of the A100s. Well, this is my update. GTC is still going on. And if you'd like to try for a chance to win a 3080 Ti, I have a giveaway going related with GTC. 
I'll put a link to that in the video.